Welcome to another episode of Off-Road Legends. I'm Michael Van Runkel here for HotCars.com. In this series, we're taking a look at some of the most iconic and successful off-road vehicles of all time. Today, I want to talk about the Toyota Celica. Now wait, you might be thinking, the Toyota Celica is a cheap sports car coupe. Hey, the new Celica is a talk of the town. Isn't this off-road legends? You're not wrong, but the rest of the world pronounces the Toyota Celica the Celica. And for every country that is obsessed with rally racing, the Toyota Celica is arguably one of the most famous and infamous rally cars of all time. The Celica's rally success started in the 1980s with a GT4 ST165. By 93, at the Safari Rally, Toyota took home an unheard of one, two, three, four finish. And then the ST205 eventually led to Toyota Team Europe being completely banned from world rally competition. In this video, we're gonna go over the Celica's various generations, power, weight, and what made the Celica more likely to become an off-road legend than Toyota's other famous sports car, the Supra. Plus, we'll cover why Toyota should maybe bring back the Celica nameplate today. But first, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Thanks. The Celica's history begins way back in the 70s, actually, when it was something of a Japanese muscle car. For context, the 71 Celica was actually a trim on the Toyota Carina and sold for $3,000. That's $21,400 in today's dollars. Meanwhile, here in the US, Ford was selling the Mustang Mach 1 for 3,300 bucks. That doesn't sound like a huge difference, but keep in mind with inflation as we know it today, that's more like 24,000, which is about a 15% price jump. Toyota was already starting to usher in the era of quality Japanese engineering way back then. And Toyota Team Europe founder Ove Anderson even raced a 1.9 liter inline four powered Celica and managed a ninth place finish in its first race. In honor of Anderson, Toyota built a one-off 2015 GT86 that was sort of an homage to those early cars, but Toyota was just getting started. You asked for it, the Toyota Celica GT Liftback. By 1976, the Celica GT Liftback had a 2.2 liter engine producing 96 horsepower. Of course, that doesn't sound like much today, but keep in mind, it only weighed 2,500 pounds then. And Toyota kept evolving the Celica until 1979, when the Celica Supra had a 2.6 liter engine doing 110 horsepower. The Toyota Celica Supra, talk about comfort. And that Supra trim on the Celica would be the eventual grandpappy of today's Supra, which we know is built mostly by BMW. By the 80s, the Celica had acquired a boxier design, pop-up headlights, and switched to front-wheel drive. Boo! But that front-wheel drive layout also resulted in a front-wheel drive-based, all-wheel drive version of the Celica called the GT4, or Alltrack, which was an early response to Audi's success with Quattro all-wheel drive and beat both Mitsubishi and Subaru to the game because both their cars, the WRX and Lancer Evo, would debut later in 1992. Toyota started finding success with those all-wheel drive Celicas pretty quickly. In the 1988 Tour de Corsa rally, the ST165 made its first start. By 1989 at Rally Australia, the car had achieved its first win, which was a big step because it was the first turbocharged all-wheel drive Japanese car to win a stage of the World Rally Championship and would set Toyota, Subaru, and Mitsubishi on a path they would follow for the next 15 years. Carlo, in 1992, Toyota introduced the ST185 Celica, which had a 2.0 liter engine, turbocharged of course, pumping out 290 horsepower in 1992. It could allegedly do zero to 60 in only 4.3 seconds. 
And with driver Carlos Sainz Sr., not the current F1 driver, and co-driver Luis Moya, Toyota took home four wins that year with the ST185, earning Sainz his second driver's championship. The ST185 success would continue when drivers Juha Kankonen and Didier Oriol took home their driver's championships in 93 and 94. And in 1993, wearing the iconic red and green Castrol oil livery, the ST185 brought home Toyota's first WRC manufacturer's title. That year, Toyota also managed the feat of a 1-2-3-4 finish at the Safari Rally. Unheard of. Forget about Ford's 1-2-3 finish with the GT40 at Le Mans in 66 and Porsche's 1-2-6 finish. 1-2-3-4 proved absolute dominance. But already at the top of the rally world, Toyota just kept climbing. They introduced a new traction control system at that year's 1000 Lakes Rally in Finland, and Kankunen took home five wins that season. In 1994, the parade kept rolling, and Toyota earned another manufacturer's title. But then, they would introduce the ST205 version of the Celica GT4. And that's where this Cinderella story turns into something of a nightmare. The ST205 cemented the Celica's place as a legit off-road legend, but not in a good way. It was arguably the most flagrant and possibly the most ingenious cheat ever discovered, because who knows what was never caught, in a rally car. Toyota was caught at Rally Catalonia in 1995. The FIA discovered the ST205's modified airflow restrictor plate because apparently a snitch ratted Team Toyota Europe out. Now the whole point of an airflow restrictor plate in a turbocharger is to keep output levels at a sane power figure as opposed to the absolutely insane levels that manufacturers were reaching in the by then discontinued Group B rallying era that were resulting in a lot of driver and spectator fatalities because you just had superchargers on compound turbos in cars that weighed like 2,000 pounds. Lancia's famous 037 rally car was just beyond the pale and resulted in the changed rules that would then create the most successful rally car of all time, the Lancia Delta HF Integrale. Now you could say that the Lancia Integrale is actually second to the Mitsubishi Pajero Evo. And that's why we're doing a separate video of each as part of our Off-Road Legends series. So stay tuned for more on those two legends. With the FIA attempting to limit power output to only 300 horsepower, Toyota's engineers set about trying to figure out a way to skirt those rules. By using a set of clips and springs on the airflow restrictor plate, when the turbo spooled up, the plate would actually move and allow an estimated 25% more airflow, resulting in approximately 50 more horsepower. That's a huge difference. We're talking 18%. So obviously it was giving the Celica GT4 ST205 a clear advantage. But the fact that Toyota was never caught until a snitch ratted them out in Spain shows just how well Toyota's engineers built this cheat into the turbocharger. In fact, the design was so spectacular that FIA president at the time, Max Mosley, said this. Inside, it was beautifully made. The springs inside the hose had been polished and machined, so not to impede the air which passed through. To force the springs open without the special tool would require substantial force. It is the most sophisticated and ingenious device either I or the FIA's technical experts have seen for a long time. It was so well made that there was no gap apparent to suggest there was any means of opening it. After discovering the cheat, the FIA banned Toyota Team Europe for the 95 and 96 seasons, essentially ending the ST205's run as a factory race car. But privateer teams were still allowed to race it in those two seasons, suggesting that Toyota had probably not shared the modified turbo setup with those other teams because they wanted to remain competitive. But then if you just looked at the two cars racing next to each other, wouldn't you be able to tell that one was significantly faster? Just having a little factory support surely couldn't have made that much of a difference. And yet it took a snitch for the entire cheat to be discovered and blow up into a scandal. Of course, 
As long as governing bodies have tried to dictate the rules of motor racing, everyone's been trying to cheat and get around them to get a little more power, a little better traction. Holly had a famous carburetor where if you screwed in one of the bolts on the intake air manifold, it would expand the carburetor's intake and allow more airflow. Famous Audi Quattro racer Michelle Mouton is even suspected of having changed cars with her mechanic at the 1998 Ivory Coast Rally. Apparently she was having engine issues, disappeared for about 70 minutes, reappeared with a car that ran, the mechanic's car had been lost, and then her car failed to finish, presumably because it was the mechanic's car, not the original car, and wasn't actually tough enough to keep rallying. But because she didn't finish, the charges that the FIA suspected might have been true were never actually leveled at her, and the record of one of the most famous racers of all time, and arguably the most famous female rally racers of all time, remains unbesmirched. The boys got up to no good also. Carlos Sainz himself was disqualified at San Remo in 93 for using illegal race fuel. Mitsubishi's team was disqualified in 91 at the Thousand Lakes rallies, also for illegal race fuel. And in 86, Peugeot used factory side skirts that the FIA had specifically banned. How are you not gonna get caught for that? They're literally right there. But as they say, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. And Toyota was definitely trying with the Celica GT4 ST205. The question remains, how hard were they trying with earlier ST165 and 185 cars? Not trying to stir up the rumor mill here, but if you feel confident enough in your engineering to get away with that restrictor plate cheat, what else have you been confident enough to try that was never discovered by the FIA? No matter how hard Toyota tried with the Celica, today, they don't even sell the model anymore. Instead, we've got the Supra, which is built by BMW, and which a lot of Toyota fans sort of thought should have received the Celica badge. To a certain extent, that feeling was only amplified when Toyota then had a 3.0 liter and a 2.0 liter version. Maybe the 2.0 liter version should have been the Celica. And now we've got a manual Supra coming up. Should it have a Celica name on it? Well, it doesn't seem like Toyota wants to bring back the Celica name at all. And maybe that's because by now it is so infamous for the cheating that disqualified Toyota Team Europe in 1995 and 1996. Meanwhile, BMW builds a lot of all wheel drive cars and now they build some front wheel drive cars. Maybe we could get a Celica, that's a Toyota, that's a BMW, that's all wheel drive. You see where I'm going with this, a GT4 all track put it in some red and green castor oil livery, and sign me up. I wanna drive the 90s version and the modern version that I literally just made up off the top of my head. And that's because Toyota definitely built an off-road legend with the Celica of the 1980s and 90s. I hope you learned something watching this video, and to learn more about the Celica over all those years, go check out hotcars.com. In the meantime, before you sign off here, Stay tuned for more from Off-Road Legends, where we'll cover other rally racers like the Porsche 959 that was built to take on Dakar and ended up being the world's fastest production vehicle. Thanks for watching, and as always, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Thanks.